Hello and welcome. My name is Meepolis, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are doing another A to Z of Queer Lit, Comics and Graphic Novel Edition. Uh, initially started by George Lester, link to the video that started all six years ago in the cards. Followed by links to my two previous videos highlighting 26 queer comics and graphic novels each. And while I already have a few more rounds mapped out, I'm always looking for more recommendations. Drop a comment with your favorite queer comics. Although last I heard you probably shouldn't use that word as YouTube in its infinite wisdom censors it automatically. Now let's dig into my latest and greatest picks. Starting with A, we have Anything That Loves, a comic anthology for bi and pan creators. Originally published in 2013, I reread and reviewed it back in May. 33 entries that were a bit hit or miss, I ended up rating this collection 3 out of 5 stars. Link to my full review, as well as all my other full reviews in the description. Moving along to B, we have The Secret to hu Superhuman Strength by Alison Bechtel. It was published and I reviewed it in 2021. Another memoir work. This is the first of Bechtel's work to be fully colored, and while it is focused on the history of exercise and Bechtel's personal obsession with exercise, it also covers the times in her life when she wrote and drew the rest of her work that she's known for. Very interesting. Four stars. Then we have C and Coming Out Again, Transition Stories by Sabrina Symington. One of those books I didn't end up making a whole standalone review video for, but one just still highlight here. Published in 2021, I initially read it earlier this year. Focused on the ways people's identities are multifaceted and change over time, including gender, sexuality, polyamory, and autism. Much like her first book, Coming Out Again, felt more than a little didactic. My biggest issue, though, was with the inclusion of a Persian character to basically say, Canada good, and I ran bad, which felt a bit overly simplistic, and people equal the state. Especially as anti-trans violence continues to grow in the states, I don't think any of us should be patting ourselves on the back and recreate the sort of white savior feminist milieu that said the war in Afghanistan was to save women, or whatever. Two stars. Next up we have D, which was marked by Fuck Off Squad by Nicole Gao and Dave Baker. Published in 2018, I would describe it as a vibes slice of life collection that I didn't really connect with. The art was nice, but they ended up using some light pink text on a white background, so that was annoying. Two stars. For E, I went with Wovable Oaf by Ed Luce, published in 2015. I tried to read Wovable Oaf many years ago with little luck. But this time around, I really loved it. The tale of a heavy metal, cat-obsessed, pursuit gay man who learns to love himself and his social awkwardness. Four stars. Then we had F, which went with The Fire Never Goes Out by N.D. Stevenson, published by Harper Teen. Rather than discussing this book further, I will take this opportunity to highlight that the HarperCollins Union, as of me writing this on December 18th, has been on strike since November 10th. Quoting from their initial strike vote press release, quote, the Union Local 2110 of the UAW represents 250 plus employees in editorial, sales, publicity, design, legal, and marketing departments. The Union is bargaining for higher pay, a greater commitment to diversifying staff, and stronger Union protection. Negotiations started in December 2021 and unionized employees have been working without a contract since April 2022. The strike authorization and the strike deadline come after months of negotiation and a one-day strike on July 20. Most recently, the union has filed an unfair labor practice charge with the National Labor Relations Board in response to the company's refusal to provide information pertinent to bargaining. Link in the description to their link tree. Looking at G, we have Gender, a graphic guide by Meg John Barker and Jules Scheel, published in 2019. I actually read and reviewed this particular volume all the way back in 2020. A bit introductory, but fairly diverse and intersectional in the people highlighted, I ended up rating it 5 stars. H is marked by the first manga of this particular round, namely my initial thoughts on the first two volumes of How Do We Relationship by Tamiful. The cute but adult story of a lesbian relationship of convenience. I'll definitely be picking up the rest of the series once it finishes up. Four stars. Next, we have I, which stands for I Love This Part by Tilly Walden, a creator who may just make it somewhere onto each of my A to Z of Queer Lit lists. This particular short installment was published in 2015 and is a very decompressed slice of life story about two people growing closer together. Four stars. For J, I picked up Jen Wang's The Prince and the Dressmaker, published in 2018. 
Originally, the prince in question was the son of King Leopold of Belgium, which, while I didn't see this highlighted in many places, was critiqued enough that newer editions have changed everything to a fictitious kingdom. So better, but not great. This is a middle grade title. I rated three stars. My choice for K was a graphic medicine title, namely Taking Turns, Stories from HIV AIDS Care Unit 371. Published in 2017, this memoir looks back at the author, M.K. Sherwick's time working with HIV AIDS patients in a very unique care setting in the 90s. Five stars. L is being filled by another must-read creator, this time Kat Lay and her book Thirsty Mermaids. Published in 2021, this queer comedy, aimed at adults this time, follows some shape-shifting mermaids as they accidentally find themselves stuck in the nightmare capitalist hellscape of a human beach town. Five stars. For M, I had to go with The Low Low Woods by Cameron Maria Machado and Donnie, presented by Joe Hill and DC's Black Label in 2020. Set in Appalachia, Machado continues to weave genre horror and the queer experience together expertly. Five stars. N is another middle grade pick with The Magic Fish by Trung Lee Nguyen and published in 2020. Another five star read, Nguyen creates a completely unique work of contemporary fiction weaving queerness, fairy tales, and cross-culture experiences together flawlessly. Next we have O, which had to be our next manga pick, Our Dreams at Dusk by Yuji Kamatani, a short quartet of a series. I really enjoyed this slow-paced slice of life and coming to terms with yourself sort of story. Originally published in 2015, the series was translated in 2019. Four stars. And P stands for another title I didn't end up making a standalone review of, namely The Pleasure of the Text by Sami Awani, a collection of short stories published in 2021. They were very heavy on the irony. I could, at a certain level, relate to the amount of negative energy that was directed at the self, but it was very hard to get through. Then for Q, we have the second fast-paced nonfiction title by Meg John Barker, Julia Scheel, This time it's Queer, a graphic history, published in 2016 this time, around was a reread. And I definitely found myself to be in a very different place personally, but it still felt pretty solid. Three stars. Next we have the letter R, which I decided stood for Reinhard Kleist, author and artist behind the translated sports biography Knockout, the true story of Emil Griffith. An American boxer and black queer man, published in 2020, the dramatic black and white art really stood out for me on this one. Four stars. S was another manga series, this time a duet entitled My Solo Exchange Diary, Volumes 1 and 2 by Kabi Nagata. Although they are a follow-up to the very popular My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness, and Kabi has continued into other short autobio work. Originally published in 2016, translated in 2018. If you need more awkward and filling representation in your life, this might be the series for you. I rated this part of the series three stars. And for T, we have the middle grade swashbuckling adventure, Tell No Tales, Pirates of the Southern Seas by Sam, Mags, and Kendra Wells, a cute historical fiction piece published in 2021. We can only hope that pirates are making a comeback into the popular zeitgeist. Well, and Zlaz Live doesn't cancel season two of Our Flag Means Death at the last minute. Three stars. U stands for Revolutionary Girl Utena by Chiho Saito, a classic manga turned anime of the 90s. I can definitely see the queer appeal, although the characterization of non-white characters was also very bad. Did not rate. Next we have V, which was Flight of the Prince by James Tinian IV, which in Roman numerals is IV. Published in 2021, I can't believe I hadn't picked up any of James's work earlier. A coming-of-age story about loyalty and revolution, among other things. Five stars. Then for W, we have The Woman in the Woods and Other North American Stories, published in 2022 by Iron Circus Comics. This is an anthology comic featuring stories by and about people indigenous to so-called North America. Grayscale isn't my favorite, but there was a lot of interesting diversity that really shines through each of these well-told stories. Four stars. And rounding the final corner... We jump to X, an immediate new favorite, Shadow Life by Hiromi, Gato, and Anzu. I love stories about older protagonists that are still taking on new life challenges, plus it's queer and working class. Published in 2021, I gave this book an immediate 5 out of 5 stars. Next up is Y, which ended up being the very short The Yellow Jar, Two Tales from Japanese Tradition by queer creator Patrick Atagan. Beautifully rendered, but hard to rate exactly. And last but certainly not least, we have Seven Miles a Second by David 
Wojnarowicz put together after his early death from HIV by James Romberger and Marguerite Van Cook. A very mature story about an artist with a very difficult time growing up in New York's Lower East Side. Surprisingly enough, this title was originally published by Vertigo in 1996. Five stars. Bye, y'all. Keep reading an organized and capitalist depression. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Nanishnabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.